What's good? It's Wug. In this series, we're talking all things Grammys. We'll go through some of the categories, discuss the nominees, predict winners, and discuss past winners, the Grammys, and its history as we near the date of the ceremony. Best Alternative Album, easily one of my favorite categories, and that's because it covers so many different genres and subgenres. It's one of the least specific categorizations of all the non-major categories, which span all genres. Winners and nominees of this award range from the new age pop rock like U2 to true rock rock like the White Stripes and Alabama Shakes, pop punk like Green Day, grunge like Nirvana, singer-songwriter alternative like Fiona Apple and Tori Amos, multi-genre artists like Beck and Gorillaz, indie folk rock like Bon Iver and Wilco, indie soul pop like Gnarls Barkley, indie dance like LCD Sound System, industrial like Nine Inch Nails. This category started in 1991 with Sinead O'Connor being its first winner. In the 90s, CD stores like Tower, Sam Goody, Blockbuster, and Warehouse Music used to categorize all non-hair metal rock as alternative. This included grunge, pop punk, and 90s style new age as well as actual alternative rock bands like the Presidents of the United States of America. Who remembers that Peaches song? Nowadays, it's basically all things considered indie music, which is about as broad a range as alternative was in the 90s. Although today, indie music actually includes a lot more black artists than alternative music did in the 90s. So for today's purposes, best alternative album is essentially best indie album. The most recent champ in this category is Beck with Colors, tying him with Radiohead and The White Stripes for most alternative album wins with three. It also made Beck third in all-time Best Alternative Album nominations with seven. The two artists above him tied with eight nominations are Radiohead and Bjork. Radiohead won three and Bjork has won none. And Bjork, who was nominated again last year, her eighth time with no wins, seems to be the victim of some sick joke played by the Recording Academy. I made a video about that atrocity last year. Please check that out. Bjork is arguably the most iconic avant-garde art pop artist of the past 30 years, and she hasn't been awarded Best Alternative Album once out of eight nominations. So the most wins, again, go to Radiohead, The White Stripes, and Beck with three. Coldplay has two. The three most recent winners of this award are Beck, The National, and David Bowie. I really wanted Father John Misty's Pure Comedy to win instead of The National. Bowie won it with Black Star, the final album he dropped just before he passed away. Let's get into this year's nominees. We start with Big Thief's UFOF, which was the first of two albums that Big Thief released in 2019. They unexpectedly came right back five months later with their latest album, Two Hands, and publications differ in which of these two albums was the better. They're both pretty damn good. These opinions were so split that their Metacritic aggregate scores across all publications were 87 and 85 for UFOF and Two Hands. Super close. And in Best Albums of 2019 list appearances across all publications, these albums ranked 17 and 19. That's crazy, and it highlights the band's consistency in recent projects. I slightly prefer Two Hands. I think it's more of a complete album, but UFOF had me totally on board when I first heard it, because remember, UFOF was released first. It features this spooky opener called Contact, which is followed by the title track and then by the remarkable Cat Tales, Probably my favorite song of the band's young discography. This band just hits the right balance of indie folk and folk rock. And with a voice like Adrian Lanker's, sometimes sweet, sometimes withered and wise, sometimes melancholy and ghostly, sometimes wild and feral. She's certainly one of the new standout front women of indie music today. It's really a joy to listen to, and the song Cattails is one of those moments. It conjures up images of old relatives and nature, mountains and rivers, family pets, and they definitely invoke the Native American influences on folk. You can hear it throughout the lyrics and the instrumentation here. I love to enjoy a weekend of psychedelics with this band. They seem pretty up on the human plight and on our connection to the earth. Another discussion for another time. This is Big Thief's first nomination in this category, and I think that their chances of winning here are actually pretty slim. They're just getting into the high-profile indie mix. Assume Form is James Blake's fourth album, but his first nomination in this category. He does, however, actually have a Grammy for, get this, Best Rap Performance. 
He was featured on the song King's Dead, along with Kendrick Lamar, J-Rock, and Future from the Black Panther soundtrack and J-Rock's Redemption album. So because of the feature, James Blake was one of the recipients of this award. Interesting stuff. He's also been nominated two other times, both in major categories, once as Best New Artist in 2014 and once for being a featured producer and artist on Beyonce's Lemonade album in 2017, which doesn't count as much as the first, right? I mean, technically everyone involved with an album gets an award, even if they produced or featured on one song. Come on. The Best New Artist one is kind of weird too because he dropped his critically acclaimed self-titled debut in 2011, but it was the 2014 Grammys where he was nominated Best New Artist based on his second album, Overgrown, from 2013. I actually think that he broke into the public consciousness back in 2011 and shouldn't have qualified as a new artist in 2013. And breaking into the public consciousness is one of the qualifications for when an artist is considered a new artist by the Recording Academy. And yes, that 2013 album, Overgrown, that's the album that had Retrograde, one of the featured theme songs of the HBO show, The Leftovers. Great show. Same director as the guy who directed The Watchmen, who just left The Watchmen and uh, discontinued that series, so HBO's gonna move on with whatever he wants to do next. Bad boy. But in 2011, 2012, James Blake quickly became an indie favorite, one of those names that you started seeing popping up on festival bills. And by the time the Overgrown album hit, he would start going higher up those festival lineups, even headlining a few smaller ones by his third album, The Color in Anything, in 2016. This new album though, Assume Form, is probably my favorite album of his since that 2013 Overgrown album. It's also his best charting album on Billboard, hitting number 6 in the UK and 21 in the US. His previous highs were 8 in the UK and 32 in the US for Overgrown. I think he's got a pretty good shot to win it here. I I by Bon Iver is his fourth album. Check it out. A lot of people think that Bon Iver is that guy who features on Kanye's My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy in Yeezus. That's Justin Vernon, founder of the band Bon Iver. Bon Iver is technically the band name, so when you see only him in an interview, that's Justin Vernon. Bon Iver, like James Blake, is one of those indie darlings whose 2008 album, For Emma, Forever Ago, had a song called Skinny Love that became indie famous, which caused the following EP, Blood Bank, and the following self-titled Bon Iver album to chart higher, gain big critical acclaim, and cement the band as an indie household name and make Justin Vernon kind of a celebrity himself. In fact, Bon Iver was nominated four times in the 2012 Grammys and won twice. The song Holocene was nominated for Record of the Year and Song of the Year, but the two that they won were for Best New Artist, where they, like James Blake in 2013, already had critically acclaimed music a couple years prior to being considered a new artist. And Bon Iver won this award, Best Alternative Music Album, for that second album, Bon Iver. They were nominated again for their third album, 22 A Million, but that award went to David Bowie for Black Star, his final album release just weeks before passing away. So this nomination for the fourth Bon Iver album, I I, makes it the third nomination in this category out of the four albums. That's an outstanding track record. Plus, I I is also nominated this year for the major category, Album of the Year across all genres. So Best Alternative Album isn't even the biggest award that I.I. is up for. For this reason, I think that I.I. has a good chance, maybe the best chance, at winning this award. Especially if it wins in the major Album of the Year category. Even if it doesn't, which I don't think it will, the Recording Academy can give that to someone else like Billie Eilish, Lana Del Rey, or Lizzo's album, but still award Bon Iver's I.I. with Best Alternative Album. Musically, I like this album a lot. I've always loved Bon Iver's indie folk and folktronica sounds. Yeah, I like that folktronica term. Justin Vernon's voice and the band's production just give it this warm cabin in the Midwestern or Canadian woods type of feel. Just enough to keep warm in cold weather. They create a very unique vibe sonically. Vampire Weekends, Father of the Bride. Like Bon Iver and James Blake, this is their fourth album. And they've had perhaps the most success up to this point out of all the nominees. I would say that the next nominee, Tom York of Radiohead, has had more, but that's only under Radiohead, not solo. Vampire Weekend's catalog is more decorated, accomplished, and commercially successful than York's solo work. 
Before Father of the Bride, Vampire Weekend had released three albums. After their critically acclaimed self-titled debut in 2008, which peaked at number 17 on the Billboard 200, they dropped two more albums, both hitting number one on the major charts. Both were also nominated in this Best Alternative Album category, with Modern Vampires of the City, their third album, winning this award. Not to mention that that album was at the very top of most of the Best of 2013 album lists, including Rolling Stone and Pitchfork. Up to this point, Vampire Weekend's been batting a thousand in baseball terms. This fourth album, Father of the Bride, also hit number one on the Billboard 200. That's three number one albums out of four. That's hardly indie, right? Despite the Billboard success of Father of the Bride and its favorable critic reviews, I don't think any critic or knowledgeable fan would go as far as to say that this is their best album. Probably won't even rank it in their top two. This album has a lot of good material, but it also was almost double the length of the other albums, almost an hour long, and it contained a little more filler than we're used to getting from a Vampire Weekend album. Now, Vampire Weekend filler is still better than most music out there by far. I just say filler based on their previously set standards of song by song quality. This is also their first album without Rostam, the band's producer, keyboardist, guitarist, banjoist, percussionist, backing vocalist. This dude was pretty key to their sound and his only contribution here is guitar, engineering, and mix on one song, We Belong Together with Daniel Heim of Heim. Rostam was a significant, significant member, but this band still managed to maintain their signature sound, not only because you hear Ezra Koenig still singing throughout the album, but because they still use that island influence, Afrobeat influence, Paul Simon's Graceland with a little bit of ska and world beat and Baroque pop sound. Again, long album, but a good one. They're definitely exploring some new sounds as well. Steve Lacey of the internet pops up here and there with some vocals and acoustic guitar. Vampire Weekend might have as good a chance as anyone at winning this award unless the Recording Academy agrees that they have heard better from the band, even though I'm sure that Ezra Koenig's got some pretty good relationships with members of the Academy if he isn't a member himself. Tom York is our final nominee with his album Anima. The Radiohead frontman's always experimental approach is on full display, but this time with a slightly funkier and groovier edge. This album hit number 5 on the UK official albums chart, but only 59 on the US Billboard 200. Now York's been doing some interesting things. He did the soundtrack to the 2018 horror film Suspiria, as well as the critically acclaimed short films and videos around those songs. On Anima, York is back in album mode. If you like Radiohead and like the experimental approach to rock, or in this case pop and art pop music, you should give this a try. There's even some dance pop, oddly enough. York has always been pretty cutting edge. In this sense, York is not too far from Bjork, this category's most robbed artist ever. Eight nominations, zero wins, come on Recording Academy. The iconic Icelandic deserves better. I think that because Tom York is the frontman of this category's other most nominated artist ever, tied with Bjork at eight, and this category's most winningest artist ever, Radiohead, with three, tied with Beck and the White Stripes, the Academy might vote in his favor on general principle, and this guy's ties with the Academy have got to run deep if he's not a voting member himself. So, he's a live underdog in this one, and you can argue that he's not even the underdog. I don't think he's going to get it, but I wouldn't be surprised. So who does win this award? As much as I'd love to see Big Thief win, I don't think it'll be them. Bon Iver and Vampire Weekend are two of the biggest and most acclaimed indie artists of the past 12 years. I say indie, but Jag Jaguar and XL are two of the most powerful, well-funded, and well-functioning indie labels in the game. Bon Iver and Vampire Weekend are also the only nominees here who have won this award. That's only if you're not counting Tom York, who won three as a frontman of Radiohead, but this is a Tom York solo album nominated here. He was also nominated back in 2007 for his solo debut, The Eraser, but he didn't win that one. I think that this year's award will actually go to the other guy, James Blake. I think he's too popular an indie artist not to receive this win, kind of as a lifetime achievement thing. Not that he's an old artist, but this is his fourth album, and he's a former Best New Artist Grammy nominee. I think that the Recording Academy will sprinkle the love here and spread it around a bit. Bon Iver won in 2012, Vampire Weekend in 2014, York's Radiohead is one more than anybody, and Big Thief is too new an artist to leapfrog the established vets. 
I'm going with James Blake's assumed form. My second pick would be Boney Vare's II. Tom York would be my third most likely, followed by Vampire Weekend and Big Thief. My favorite band of 2019 has the least of a chance. Let me know your thoughts on this list of best alternative music nominees, who you think will win and who you think should win. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're into music talk. I'm Woog. Thanks for tuning in.